It's just another day here at Twath Corpus Hollow, and today we're going to be studying an unusual find, at least in this part of the world, the lobster mushroom. People are always curious about where we live, and this is home any given day. Produce coming in from the gardens, wood chips set beside the, uh, the chairs where Daphne and I like to relax sometimes. The lobster mushroom is actually a mushroom that is being attacked by a fungus. In other words, it's a mold upon a fungus. The fungus itself is Hypomyces lactofluoum. It's what gives the lobster mushroom its distinctive red color. Here it is from the top. I found this particular lobster mushroom growing near various evergreens and poplars, and this particular mushroom is known to grow among various kinds of trees, often hemlocks, and we have hemlocks on our land too, though they were not around the site where I found this one. It was almost entirely buried in sphagnum moss, but its distinct bright coloration made it visible despite that. It was actually one of my students who, who first spotted it and uh, I pulled it out from the ground, the ground from there. When I first saw it, I actually did not think it was, I actually did not think that it was a, a, lactari or a lobster mushroom because I couldn't see gills, but you can see it just above my thumb again, the traces of the gills. They've just been deformed or eaten away by the hypomyces fungus that has infected it. The mushroom is often cracked as it grows, getting dirt inside of it, which spoils the mushroom. However, this mushroom, while it's a bit wrinkled, has no dirt inside of it, and I can feel that the flesh is firm. We're going to cut it open in a moment. The Hypomyces fungus attacks Lactarius and Rusula mushrooms, which are both quite common. A few Lactarius and a few Rusulas can be somewhat poisonous. Um, however, the, uh, the Hypomyces prefers the Lactarius and specific Lactarius and Rusula varieties. The Lactarius often has a crumbly flesh. The infection of the Hypomyces mold makes the Lactarius mushroom dense and white. If it is a Rusula, it has a flesh which is pretty good, but has a mild flavor, but the Hypomyces mold gives uh, a peppery flavor to the lobster mushroom. Let's cut it open and see what the flesh looks like. Very dense. And we can see the pilus, the cap of the mushroom, and the stipe much more clearly here. We can also see that this particular lobster mushroom is in good shape. And I attribute its good shape to the fact that over the uh, past couple weeks, up until just yesterday, we had a dry, hot spell. In fact, many of the mushrooms I've found in the woods over the last few days have been naturally partially dehydrated, just sitting on the ground out in the woods. One of the distinctive things about the lobster mushroom is that not only does it look somewhat like a lobster on the outside, but when you cook it, the mushroom develops an aroma that is similar to cooking lobster or crab, and even the juice exuded by the mushroom is reddish and smells of lobster or crab. Though the flavor is transient, you wouldn't want to cook it too long, otherwise uh, that flavor can, can evaporate off. This was a rare and excellent find. I would like to thank Jolene, who initially spotted this fungus on our trip, and I will sample this mushroom later today. As always, when sampling a new mushroom after you have confirmed it's not one of the toxic varieties, try only a small sample. When I sample this, it will initially be a piece no larger than a quarter, and that is just to confirm that I will not have an allergic reaction to it. Many times, even non-toxic mushrooms can cause allergic reactions because mushrooms are made of a substance that's very, very similar to chitin, which is a natural substance that humans often have allergic reactions to. I personally don't have allergic allergies to anything, so I don't think I will develop a reaction. But with all foraging, discretion is the better part of valor. Forage, forage cautiously, forage with care, and you're not likely to go wrong. I've been foraging my entire life, and I have never once been sick due to something that I have eaten, and that's from foraging cautiously. I don't claim to be the greatest expert in the world, nor do I know how to identify everything out there. Nobody does. Discretion is the greatest part of valor. Do your research, approach with caution, ensure that what you're doing is safe and sound, and you should do well. And if you happen to be lucky enough to find some lobsters in your area, enjoy them with my compliments. I'm Clu Serentine, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Edible and Medicinal Treasures of the Wildwood.